Hello everybody, my name is Liam, and I'm going to be talking to you about this week in fantasy hockey, give you some tips, predictions, and pickup options. So let's get right into it. So follow me on Twitter, I did tweet about this earlier today, only about 60 minutes ago. I put in all the games they have this week and next week, so this is combined week in fantasy, so half of this week, then we got the all-star break. And then we get a full next week all combined into one. Some leagues you'll have whatever pickups you have for the whole season per week is going to be the same. So say you had like four per week, it's just going to be four. But some leagues double it for this week. So mine mine is one of the week, uh, the leagues that doubles it. So we normally have three ads and this week we're going to have six. So I'm going to get into a lot of options and a lot of ways to go about picking up players. So as you can look at the teams, a lot of teams only have a couple games, and a lot of teams will have a lot of games this week. So let's get into my strategy for this week. So personally, I'm doing really well, well ahead of everybody else in my league, so I don't need to go week by week, I'm 15-1, and one, so I'm already looking for the playoffs, uh, I will be making a video about anybody else who's cruising in their league and can just start looking ahead uh, for the playoffs, but this one is just for this week, everybody trying to grind and get a win this week, so my strategy would be to find someone with two games this week, and then make two or three pickups on those teams. And then you could drop those three pickups, two or three pickups, for people that have more games next week. Uh, in the case of the Red Wings, I kind of like their games next, next week. Uh, and they do have two games this week. So let's get into the Red Wings. So you might not want to drop this player. It could be a full two-week ad for you. Who could be available? Well, Robbie Fabry has been playing on their first line a lot as well. He is a hot and cold player. He got really hot earlier. Looks like he's actually been demoted because he's cooled down. Uh, Philippe Sadine is a good option for the first one. He is there, and let's see if Fabry keeps the first power play. So, yes, it looks like Fabry and Mike Green are both on the first power play. I actually want to see their box sports. Yes, so I actually want to... I typed in goals against average, but I actually want to see where they're at with their special teams. I want to see how many power play goals the Wings have. Uh, so they're one of the worst. And as you can see with their percentage, they're not very good on the power play. So they're not very good at scoring in general, but just having someone on the power play isn't the best for the Wings. But then again, they're the Wings. They're just not very good. Uh, so keep an eye out for them. I mean, Larkin and Bertuzzi are good. But also keep an eye out for Mantha, uh, who could be coming back soon. Let's see. Hasn't resumed skiing. No timeline. Okay, so maybe not. Uh, let's check out for Athanasiu. See if he is doing well after the All-Star break. Okay, so he could be uh, an interesting pickup for after the All-Star break. Only owned in 30 Three percent of the leagues. Okay, an another team that has two games this week would be the Minnesota or Minnesota Wild, and I like their games this week. While I find them, I think they're playing the Panthers tonight, and yes, that is true. And then they got the Wings. So this is my favorite team for this half week. So you can pick one of these guys up for the two days, and then dump them for someone else, or if you believe in them, you can keep them. I picked up Zach Parise. My league is not too deep this year. Last year it was very deep. Anybody in a deep league, Kevin Fiala, very hot and cold player. Uh, and he's 
he's an underrated player. He's, he's very good. Looks like Brad Hunt's going to be out tonight. Uh, Marcus Foligno has been red hot lately. Just not last game, but it was Dallas, so they have good defense. Uh, Luke Kunin, very good as well. That whole line has been very hot lately. And the other one on that line is Joel Erickson Ike. And then we got Ryan Donato. He had a big game the other night. I say that Dallas had a good defense, but I think they lost that game 7-0. So not the best game for them. Uh, but Donato had a big game against them. Very hot and cold player. Interesting pickup for a deeper league because 2.3% owned. He had a good game against Dallas. He scored a goal. I don't really know him that well, but he's not owned that much. If you're in a deep league, he might be available. And uh, we got Greenway. Let's see how he's doing lately. He's he not lately. Not owned in a lot of leagues. So you can look out for him. Jonas Brodeen is my favorite low-key defensive option with the Wild. And then, yep, that's pretty much it for the Wild. Other team that has... Two games this week would be the Panthers. They're playing the Wild tonight. Stalock should be in net versus Bob Brobsky. Uh, so let's check out the Panthers, see what's going on with their lines. First line is Beast. Noel Chari on the second line with Brett Connolly. Frank Vertrano, very solid pickup. And if he is taken, Dominic Tonnet. Toninato is on that line as well. Hoffman's very good. Totally botched his name before. And then we got Brian Boyle on the first second power play, which is a solid second power play. So he might be available. But let's, let's just check out the percentage owned for these players. So if we scroll on down, Frank is only 15%. Uh, Mike Methusen had a great year last year. He could be an interesting option for a very deep league. Anton Strollman doing very decent this year. Uh, cold as of late, however. Yep, Brian Boyle down the line. He's been all right lately. He's got a goal against LA and an assist against Vancouver. So, uh, not owned in a lot of leagues, but he's second power play. Even though I'm sure they don't get that much of a run out. Because the first power play is so good. He's got two assists. Uh, Daily Faceoff has him in the game. He was out for an illness. But he's playing with Hoffman and Toronto. So, if Toronto's taken, you might want to go with him. And, uh... Let's see what else we got. The Jets have two games this week. I don't like their games as much as I like the Panthers, uh, the Wild, and Detroit. But uh, Andrew Kopp is on the first line, as you can see. Perot, I think he had an assist in one of the last two games. He's a very hot and cold player. Mostly pretty much just cold this year. But uh, always an intriguing option. Saw him play a decent amount last year, and he looked very good. Don't know what ha is happening this year because he's really not racking up the points. Uh, Brian Little is someone you can look out for uh, for this week. Probably not going to be back. But uh, if you take a look, you can see Lowry is day-to-day. -day. Let's see if he's going tonight. Just interested. So we don't have an update on his status yet. But Perot, not owned a lot. He had an assist. Not doing very well in the you know, plus minus department. He's been minus nine this year. He's just having a very poor season. Maybe he could turn it around two games this week. And then Adam Kopp, only 2% owned. He's the one I like the best uh, just because he's on the first line. Uh, hasn't done. He was plus one and solid points right there. So uh, 
that, that's what happens when you put on the first line. And I just want to check out Russell Vick. He had two goals. I think he got demoted, but he still scored one of these goals after he got demoted from his line. So he's kind of hot right now. Not extremely hot, but doing decently well. And then, so that's that's about it for this week that has two games. I think there was one more team, maybe. Just want to make sure I didn't miss anybody. Might be one more team that was two games. The Avs only have one playing tonight. Panthers we went over. Wild we went over. The Rangers Islanders this week. Penn's Flyers this week. And, uh, yep, that, that was about it. So, moving on to next week. Who do I like for next week? Uh, so, the King, uh, the Leafs are an interesting option. They got four games against the Sharks, Ducks, and Kings. Dallas gave a lot of goals that one game, but overall they have good goals against. Leafs have just been very good offensively, so let's just check out the Leafs. Four games next week. So if you're adding someone this week, look for Andres Johansson. He's back from injury with Nylander and Tavares. Kierfoot's been good lately. I mean, that, that's a pretty decent line itself. Kapanen, Infield, and Kierfoot. Solid, solid line that they put together there. And you got Kapanen on the second power play with Johansson, Spiza, and Rasmus Sandin. So let's just check out who's owned the Leafs. As you can imagine, are a popular team as far as of course, good. Uh, as far as uh, people picking them up, just like the Predators. Hard to get your hands on a lot of these guys. That Kaiman's only owned in thirty-seven percent of leagues. Not too bad. Andreas Johansson, twenty-five percent of leagues. Rasmus Sandin, thirteen percent. Kierfoot. Only 10% of leagues, so that could be a guy right there. He's been solid lately. Got a goal against Chicago, and they have some good games coming up. Uh, Pierre Engel, only 2.3% of your league. Racking up assist on that Kierfoot goal, I believe. Travis McDermott had a solid season last year, if I remember correctly. Not the same this year, but if you want to take a chance in a deep league, he could be an option. She gets plenty of ice time with all their injuries at the back. Timothy Lindgren, I think they sent him back to the AHL, but he might come back next week. I'm pretty sure he's a highly touted defenseman, so check out for him as well. And uh, I think I pretty much hit on everybody I want to go over. Spiza is second power play. As well, he had a hot start. He's a hot and cold player, very streaky. Cody CC was uh, very hot at the early season as well. And that's pretty much about it for the Leafs. That's one of the teams I like for next week. And let's check out the other teams. The Blues with four games against solid teams, though. So that's why I'm not going to go over the Blues. Uh, the Preds, they, they're they playing some teams that are not doing that well defensively. So let's go over the Preds. Austin Watson makes the first line. Mikael Grunlin is on a very solid line. Now we got Rocco Grimaldi playing with Benino and Arvidsson. Craig Smith and Turris both got on the score sheet. So they're, they seem to be pretty deep offensively. They just haven't been getting it done defensively. They're, they're just kind of a mess this season. They seem to be like they would be one of the best teams, but they just haven't been. So maybe they could turn it around the second half and... They definitely have an opportunity right out the gate with four games. So let's go into Nashville. Let's see who you could potentially get. 
uh, John Kirk, John Crook is first line, and he's only 27% owned. I think he is first power play as well, so might be able to get him. I would be, but I'm not in a deep league. Cal, uh, Craig Smith is owned a lot for someone who's uh, he's doing pretty good this season. He's on and off. Streaky player. It might be a good time to pick him up. Coming off the goal. But Nino had such a good start. And he has ver very much slowed down as of late. But he is playing with Arvidsson now. Who has been very good lately. Let's go into Austin Watson. He could be your guy. He's first line now. Uh, just back. Was he called up from the AHL? Or was he... Come from an injury. Not sure. He does pick up a lot of penalty minutes. He fights uh, a decent amount. But he is first line. So, you know, worth checking him out. Rocco Grimaldi. He's playing with a solid line now. Hot and cold player. If he starts heating up, you look out for him. And then the rookie, Colin Blackwell. Playing with Kyle Torres on the fourth line. Don't expect him to get too much ice. Okay. Who else do we like for next week? Let's see. Habs are an interesting option. They got Sabres, Panthers. I'll go over them just because they're playing the Sabres and Panthers next week. Panthers need to get together defensively. So we'll go over the Habs. Kovalchuk been very good lately. Keep an eye on Gallagher. Joel Armia scored the other night. And, uh, yeah, their second power play is pretty good. Kankaniemi uh, has gone on there with the tar. We'll see what happens when Gallagher gets back. I think they're going to wait until the break. Oh, that's the first power play, yeah. Second power play, very solid as well. Cousins, we'll go for him. Now that Armia is back, that second power play is very much improved. I do like Joel Armia. Nick Suzuki also is going to benefit from Armia being back. Cousins is fourth line, just letting you know. But I think he scored the other night, or got an assist at least, if I am correct. So keep an eye on him. Let's see. Well, Mia is only on 27.6% of leagues. Ben Wright skates with Shea Weber, so he's always an interesting option. Plus 6 on the season. Deno is plus 15. He's an underrated player. I'm surprised he's only on 59% of leagues. Yet Nick Suzuki owned in only 12% of leagues. He's on a very solid line. And then you got Kankaniemi for his power play. Very cold lately, though. Not having a great season. Pretty sure he did pretty well last season. You got Atari Lekkonen having a solid season as well. Only 7.9% owned. And keep an eye on Paul Byron. He was very solid last season. Only played 19 wasn't great in those games, but uh, looks like he's skated for the first time since December 13th, so look out for him. The Cousins, as I mentioned before, two goals against Vegas, so I was right about seeing him. Not owned in a lot of leagues, and uh, very good deep league potential there. Kale Flurry not up right now. And Victor Mete, he started off well this season. I remember he had a couple assists and finally scored that goal that he was looking for. But very much slowed down. Wouldn't recommend him, to be honest. And then we got uh, Kolchak, only 42% owned. So next week could be. The week where you take the dive for Kovalchuk. Just Gallagher's day to day, though. So 
Let's see where everybody ends up when he gets back. He should be with the team after the All-Star break, I would think. But you never know with concussions. You do want to be extra careful nowadays. Player safety is very important. And uh, for next week, who else do we got? The Ducks have four. Solid. Two of them aren't that great. Uh, but I did want to go over the Sens. I feel like I skipped over them. The Leafs, the Sabres, and the Devils. Going to be a lot of players available on the Sens. And they have four games next week. So very interesting for the Sens. If you're in a deeper league, you're going to get a lot of people available. Connor Brown, fantastic lately. Look at that. Three goals, three assists. He's red hot right now. Look out for Connor Brown. Uh, Nemestikov also getting very hot as well. He must be playing with Connor Brown. Uh, let's check that out. Check out the lines. We got Anisimov making the first line. Wow, look at that. Interesting option. He is playing with Connor Brown. Chris Tierney's also been on the score sheet a lot lately as well. Drake Batherson still staying on the first unit. Colin White also on that first unit. Doesn't impress me that much. I think they're the worst percentage in the league in scoring on power play. Uh, it looks like most of their goals are coming off the power play. Uh, so let's just, yeah, worst percentage in the league. Let's just look at goals, power play goals. See if they're the worst in that. Yeah, they are the worst. Uh, the Islanders are pretty terrible, too, for a solid team. And, uh, yeah, so a lot of, a lot of these players are going to be available. They are going to get a bit of a rest. Let's see if he's staying here. Uh, yeah, signed AHL, so look to see who will place him on power play. On the first power play. Mestikov, very hot lately. Tyler Ennis. Underrated player. He's been good. Well, so look to see where their lines are at next week. Again, they could be a good pickup if you're swapping someone out uh, that had two games this week and you want to swap them out with someone on the Sens. In a deep league, you're going to have a lot of people available. So let's just go to the Ducks and think that. That's it. I'll wrap it up after that. I'll give you some predictions for tonight as well. Wrap it up. Let's check out the Ducks. R Raquel with Daniel Sprung and Gethlaff now. Mikasa promoted to the second line. But it looks like the third line is even better. To be honest, Devin Shore uh, is a good player to look out for because Henrik and Silverberg are very good. Uh, looks like Raquel... Ooh, looks like they really bumped up the first power play. Getting all the big names together. So, look out for Raquel. I might just pick him up myself. Always liked him as a player. And then you got Kase. But, uh, yeah, let's check out to see who you can get, who's going to be owned. I can't imagine the Ducks are popular. So, not with fans, but just in fantasy. For the most part, yeah. So you can get you can get Hampus Lindholm, who's a solid deep league player. I had a very solid last season, 17 assists so far. But if you're in a plus minus league, penalty minutes, not the best. So that's my league. That's why he's not averaging a lot. Let's see what we got. Kase always can just explode. Seen him get a hat trick before. Let's take out Shore because I don't think anybody owns this guy, and he's now on a solid line. So, again, check out their lines next week. This is one that we can just update next week as well. No hurry on this one, but look out for the Ducks.
And that's pretty much it uh, for today. Follow me on Twitter, Hockey Fantasy D1. Follow me on Instagram, SexManta94. And that's all I got for you today. Have a great day.